so, uh, a little while back, that before all the Warren controversy happened, and this might lead to like why the Warren controversy happened with Bernie, uh, because this was right before it. Uh, there's a story that I found that popped up on my feed about about Bernie surging, right, from the independent. And, uh, and they basically were like, like the article opened up by saying that Biden and Bernie, despite the fact that they're like polling really well, are having a hard time um, capturing the attention of Iowa voters. Uh, and I don't know. That's a little hard to believe, I think. Um, Biden, sure, because, I mean, once you listen to him talk, you're like, oh, God, okay, this man is not here anymore. I don't know where he is, but he's not here. Uh, but with Bernie, like, he, like, there's a lot of people showing up. I think Bernie consistently since 2016 has made more politically active people by essentially like being I, I well you know in 2016 I think when when CNN and MSNBC were kind of shining a light on him they assumed that it would it, the people would mock him and kind of make fun of him but uh, I think quite the opposite started happening because people were like holy shit this is we've been waiting for someone like this. We've been fucking waiting for someone like this. And and then like you see his rallies, you see his speeches. Uh you know, there's so many people that show up. There's so many people that are more politically engaged now. Um uh, you know, so I don't think it's an accurate statement about Bernie. And I know everyone's going to be like, well, you're just biased because you're a Bernie supporter. You're a Bernie guy. Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, I'm a Bernie guy, but I am I also can look at him on an objective basis. Like, that's... I think that's good. That's what you should do. I think there there's sort of this high level of, like, hero worship and high level of, like, holding people up on a pedestal when, when we find can- candidates like this. And, look, I'm, I'm, I'm a big Bernie supporter. I'm a big Tulsi supporter. Um, I think everybody that watches my videos and pays attention to my channel kind of knows that already. Um, but I'm, I'm also critical of them. I also like look at them and I go, hmm, that decision was a little weird or hmm, I don't know why you would say something like, like one of my crit- critiques of Bernie, uh, other than I don't particularly agree with him all the time on foreign policy and I think sometimes he's a little bit hawkish on that end, um, is why aren't you going on the offensive against these fucking neoliberal jerk offs like Biden and uh, and 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 Warren, right? Like they're saying shit about you. And with Warren, I, I think he did. And maybe he went after Biden again. Like he basically pointed out his corruption, and uh, and you know Biden kind of there, there's like a video of Biden uh, that kind of like freaked out. Uh, you know, where, where he was like, well, a reporter asked him something along the lines of like, why do you think Bernie Sanders said this? He was like, why, 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 why? I was just like, okay, buddy. All right, buddy. Settle it down. Get some nap. Get a nap in. Get your brain back to where it needs to. But that's what they, but that's how the article opens. The article opens by basically saying like, I have a voter's are just not interested in the campaign or or just in the primaries period but it's like compared to what to watching porn like which you can do both right they talk about like walking and chewing gum like at this point with how much all this stuff is on the internet like you can watch porn and then also watch a, a Bernie rally or vice versa however you feel like you need to go about doing that I'm not you know I'm not here to judge but even before that I think Bernie's name was pretty consistently in the media the last two weeks he's been he's been in uh, in all of the media cycles with 
the controversy with Elizabeth Warren and Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden. Um, there's been a lot of attention being thrown on Bernie, excuse me, but, um, you know, so, but even before that, I think there was a lot of attention being given to Bernie. There's a lot of articles that pop up on, on my feeds about, uh, about Bernie and, uh, you know, some of them are, uh, are older articles, but, uh, nonetheless, there are, people are talking about him. He's in the zeitgeist. He's in the conversation. Uh, to make that claim seems just so bizarre to me. It doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> Where uh, all these people across the country are super fucking psyched about this guy. And uh, and then, you know, you, 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 you kind of have uh, corporate media that's like, yeah, but nobody cares. And it's like, yeah, but everybody cares. You guys don't care about him because he he doesn't speak for you guys, but all of us do. But I talked about this in in um, um uh, on on my other podcast, Taboo Table Talk, the other week, where this is just this corporate elitism, where they want to dictate to you what you should think and believe, um, instead of believing and thinking for yourself and making those decisions for you. They're like, no, 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 this is what you need to think. That's why they brought Hillary Clinton into this whole fucking fray. Um, so, yeah, uh, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, they they're claim that 20% are really paying attention. Sure, maybe 20% are going past uh, the reporting of CNN or NPR or, or any of these other sort of corporate media outlets. Maybe. Um, but I don't know because I do see a lot more people that are like, you know, coming, coming into the midst of the converse, into the midst of these, these, uh, progressive conversations. And if you're, and if you really see it being that low, then why not give, give them something to pay attention to? Why not give them a candidate that actually like, uh, that fucking matters, that, that is talking to them about issues that, uh, that, that you know, they, they are concerned about that affect their lives every day. And Bernie's doing that. So again, it's like to, to make that claim that such a small percentage of people are, uh, are, are that care or paying attention. It's, it feels like a major disconnect. It feels like you're trying to pull one over on me. And this is what the media does. They do this pretty consistently. So you have to keep an eye out for it when that sort of stuff happens. And you go, Hmm, that's weird. Uh, a bunch of people in my feed are talking about Bernie. A bunch of news outlets are talking about Bernie. But all of a sudden, this corporate media is like, here's why Bernie Sanders is not popular. And, and people, are, people are not jumping on his campaign. It's like, what? What? He's leading in the polls. What? They're fucking gaslighting you media gaslighting what we need right now instead of like these political soap operas about who you know who's in the lead how are they getting there blah blah whatever we need to talk about policies we need to talk about solutions we need to talk about you know a, a full out paradigm shift in our society What we what we're really seeing is is that none of these centrists uh, really really compete with progressives. They just don't. They 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 keep getting out out polled and and it, especially at the tail end of this Elizabeth Warren debacle, um, I I really feel like she is I like. The mask came off and everybody kind of realized, like, she's not really a progressive, that she's sort of this neoliberal centrist Republican person, uh, and she's going to kind of do what the DNC tells her to do because she wants to win, and, you know, it's all about, it's all about what letter you have, what color, or what mascot your team is, and once that mascot gets in, everything will be fixed, like, no, no. We all have work to do. If we're gonna, if we're gonna fix this republic, we're all gonna have to fix it together. We can't, 
we can't just rely on uh, on a politician or, or something like. And I think you know, Elizabeth Warren kind of showed her true colors in that sense. Um, and the uh, the next story, because this kind of bleeds into the next story as well, which is that Bernie is the only candidate that's talked about uh, banning facial recognition software. Uh, and b- this is particularly for law enforcement. That's, that's who he wants to do it for law enforcement. Using facial recognition software, he would like to, uh, he would like to ban that because it's unethical and, uh, and, and it doesn't, it doesn't help. There's too many problems with it. Uh, you know, so if he does ban it, that just means that, uh, you know, a cop can't jam your face into your iPhone X anymore because you got pulled over for, for a traffic offense and, uh, and they want to look through your phone so they can't just jam your face into it, you know, just like they can't do that anymore. So that's cool. Um, uh, you know, that's a fun thing I think we should all be excited about. A couple cities that have already kind of banned spatial recognition software. Um, San Francisco, California, Oakland, California, Somerville, Massachusetts, which is where I'm heading right now. Um, they've all kind of banned it. They've not kind of banned it. They, they, they did ban it. Uh, like law enforcement can't use facial recognition software. Um, Fight for the Future has come out against it. The ACLU has come out against it. They've all called for banning it. And really, it's bi- it, this facial recognition software and the, and the biometrics and, you know, where, where every camera is connected to, to, to a bigger network and, um, you know, it, you're looking for somebody and you're going to tap into all of these security cameras or phone cameras or whatever, um, really violates your Fourth Amendment rights. Fourth Amendment rights are getting fucked, uh, where you get to have your own privacy and that's allowed. Um, you know, and privacy is very, very important. You know, that affects your mental health. There's there's mental health aspects involved in privacy. Uh, I've, I've I've done a I've done a bunch of videos talking about that, but primarily it's you don't get to be yourself because you think uh, you're being watched all the time. So you act a certain way. You act in a, a in a societally appropriate way. Uh, you know, like you can't pick your nose because people might judge you. Uh, you can't, d- you know, dance in your car because oh, if someone sees me, oh, they're gonna think I'm a silly goof. And it's like it, to me, it's like who gives a shit, right? Like I get it, but also that's part of it. Like there societal there are societal stigmas of being weird of being eccentric of being kind of different right like uh it's so funny to me because we are the we are the society that touts individualism that touts people being who they want to be and who they they have the freedom of choice to be who they want to be they have the freedom of choice to uh to 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 uh, express themselves the way they want to be expressed uh but hey try to act like everyone else huh why don't you just do what everybody else does why can't you be like everybody else? But don't stop being you, though. But be, I mean, be you, but in the context of, like, being like everybody else. It's this bizarre, hypocritical juxtaposition um, of our society. And, and now it's kind of, this idea is really perpetuated by... Um, Boy, these roads are not awesome, huh? Sorry, folks. By these, uh, by these, um, these big dumb dicks that want to that want to spy on you all the time, that want to see what you're doing 24/7, that want to use facial recognition software and and invade your privacy, and and they're all selling it to you in terms of security, like it's going to be good for you, like it's supposed to be this big big saving grace for you, right? Uh, and what we're living in is a panopticon. Uh, I believe Jeremy Bentham was the first person to talk about it. I heard about this concept from Glenn Greenwald uh, in his TED Talk a little while, uh, probably a year or two ago. And that's that I talk about the panopticon in a, in, in a previous video that I've, I've made uh, that I recommend that you guys go check uh, because uh, I'm pretty proud of it. I like, the, I like that video. I talk a lot about the 
the Cloud Act and, and what it's doing and how, um, how, how it's invading our privacy and, and you know, uh, destroying our lives uh, and all that fun stuff, fun stuff. But, like, we're living in a panopticon. We don't know when we're being watched, who we're being watched by, um, any of that sort of stuff. So we don't get to really be our true selves. We just, we just have to behave in this way that society has dictated to be normal, to be, uh, uh, to be the right way to, to behave. And uh, oh man, I am driving around New York City right now. I fucking hate it. I'm so sorry. The roads are terrible, you guys. Uh, trying to do my best and keeping the camera up and uh, and deliver uh, the piece. I did not expect the roads to be this terrible right now, but uh, hey, there you go. Here's some here's some shit that we could be uh, spending our time doing is fixing roads instead of spying on each other. Uh, won't that be exciting if we did that instead of uh, just constantly worrying about uh, facial recognition software and shit like that? Uh, pushing facial recognition software. Okay, cool. It seems like the roads got a little bit better. Uh, maybe. Oh, okay. Um, so we talked about the Van Opticon. And... Uh, there's a, so, so a lot of the candidates have talked about it. Um, a lot of candidates have addressed uh, facial recognition software and biometrics, but nobody's ever talked about banning it. No one's ever talked about really getting rid of it in any way. Um, they have talked about doing surveys and uh, that sort of stuff, like, but they've never really talked about outright just saying this thing doesn't work here's all the problems with it here's why it doesn't work uh you know and why we have to get rid of it they're like well we'll do this survey we'll we'll do the study we'll we'll take a look at how these things work and figure out whether we need to continue to have them or not but really all it is is a stopgap measure that still allows biometric and facial recognition software to be out there to keep doing what they're doing without actually like getting rid of them in any any real real way in any real fashion um and there's a lot of problems with it right like so like they misgender trans people which means i mean that right there we got to cancel it we got to cancel facial recognition software if it's misgendering trans people just terrible like you like what the fuck how have we got how how have we advanced technology to the point where we can like try to recognize use use a, a giant surveillance system to, to find people's faces but we but we can't teach that technology to be like socially progressive uh, there's a lot of false positives that happen uh, they don't uh, account for people's faces as they grow like they like they don't account for young people's faces to like grow as much so there's that um You know, they, it takes the nickname Babyface very seriously, I think. But we got to get rid of it. it the, uh, this technology has far too many problems than it does benefits. Uh, I, you know, I, I think in terms of, it, in terms of if you want to use it, if you want to use it, uh, and I don't, I don't even know if I'm 100% on, on this philosophy uh, but just to play a little devil's advocate if you want to use facial recognition software then I think you should go through the appropriate channels in order to get authorization um, and make it publicly known that hey we are going to use facial recognition software in the New York City subway from this time to this time and if people are like okay that seems cool. We're, you're on a manhunt of a guy that, you know, told the, a horse to go eat his balls or whatever. Uh, okay, 
And if that happens, then I think the technology can be used. But again, it, it, it seems like uh, it's very rushed and authoritarian. Uh, to It's rushed to push an authoritarian agenda without really uh, thinking about the consequences, without really thinking about how to make it work properly and how, how, to, how, how to execute it properly either. Uh, I think a lot of people, I think they just kind of used it to be like, oh, we'll scare them. We'll say it's for safety and not and you know protect them from terror and all that shit how's it going everybody thank you so much for checking out this video if you enjoyed this video you will probably also enjoy my live stand-up comedy and i have tour dates coming up all across the country i am coming to uh, Vermont. I'm going to be doing a bunch of shows in Vermont. I'm going to be at the Vermont Law School, uh, Middlebury, Vermont, Burlington, Vermont, uh, Bridgewater, Vermont. Uh, I'm also coming to Rochester, New York, uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, Huntsville, Alabama, Springfield, Missouri, Fayetteville, Arkansas, Springdale, Arkansas, uh, uh, Denton, Texas, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Austin, Texas, and Dallas, Texas. I'm going to be touring all across the country so if you want to check out those tour dates grab your tickets rsvp to these events uh, you can do so by going to ramen noodles comedy.com that's r-a-m-a-n noodles comedy.com all of my tour dates are available there uh, all of the past episodes of this show my other podcast taboo table talk and forkful of noodles are available there as well uh, if you would like to check out more uh, and please uh, hit the hit the like, hit the subscribe button, uh, get your notifications uh, to get updated when I put out more videos. Uh, if you guys would 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 like to see more videos from me, uh, obviously. Uh, but uh, but videos like this, videos that talk about issues that talk about um, deeper topics, are usually uh, not shown to as many people. Uh, as they would. So uh, it's uh, very dependent on you guys uh, hitting that like, hitting the subscribe, and, and sharing it if you can, uh, if you share this stuff. That would be amazing as well. Uh, thank you guys so much. I really, really appreciate you guys watching this video and checking it out, and we'll, uh, we'll see you on the road.